While the World Cup in Qatar continues with little or no reference to COVID-19, the virus continues to make the headlines in other parts of the world. With infections rising as the Northern Hemisphere enters winter, we ask, how will countries fare as temperatures drop? We speak to our go-to professor, Howard Lee, from Seoul National University's Department of Molecular Medicine and Biopharmaceutical Sciences. Good morning, professor. Good morning. Thank you for having me back. Well, the Omicron variant emerged exactly a year ago, and the world saw another wave of COVID-19. Is there going to be another variant like Omicron that will put the world yet again under serious pressure from new infections? Well, as you pointed out, uh, 2022 uh, 20, was a year of uh, the Omicron variants, uh, which pushed out the Delta variant to the edge of the stage. The Omicrons were generally milder uh, than the previous ones, including the Delta, although they were more transmissible and immune ev evasive, particularly for the recent sub-variants such as BQ1 and BQ1.1, which are actually the child variants of BA5. Uh, that said, however, a lab in South Africa recently identified a new variant that could cause worse at least than the current predominant Omicron strain. Uh, the new strain, after successive mutations, has been found to become more similar to the original version of the coronavirus uh, found uh, in Wuhan in China a long time ago. We don't know if this is or other new variants can become another Om Omicron in the future. But one thing is clear. Unlike our expectation, the COVID-19 virus is not attenuating. It is just evolving. And we do not know when uh, its journey will end and where. Right. Now, we just saw from the previous report, China's zero COVID-19 policy resulted in a mm -hmm. rare open displays of anger from citizens there, aside from the associated difficulties. Is zero COVID a good way to approach the current pandemic situation from a science pr perspective? Absolutely not. Uh, the so-called zero COVID policy in China had just one objective, which is to keep cases as low as possible, almost zero. To achieve this, China has implemented mass testing, uh, quarantined the sick uh, in government facilities, many times extremely inhumane, and imposed strict lockdowns that have expanded to entire cities. However, Many Chinese have grown weary of the lengthy lockdowns and widespread testing. And this is why protests have erupted in all of the cities across China against the uh, country's strict pandemic restrictions. Not only that, the geo-COVID policy has come at a huge cost. For example, food shortage, shortage economic turndown, and limitations in daily life and travel. That's not the end of the story. As it becomes more transmissible, COVID-19 cases are rising again in China. This has also led to growing public dissent against the government's strict containment policies. So, in a nutshell, uh, the zero COVID policy is not something that is sustainable. Right. And I want to talk about something that's kind of fresh news right now uh, around the world. Twitter just rolled back its misinformation policy regarding COVID-19. As a result, users of the platform may be exposed to false claims from unqualified contributors. I just wanted to ask you, as you are a professor in this field, how important it is at this point that people get their information from credible sources. And as a doctor, where would you recommend people learn about COVID-19 and even general information about health? Not only just Twitter, but all the social media are full of misinformation, which is sometimes harmful if unfiltered. This is particularly serious for situations like COVID, where um, misinformed people also infect others with wrong and scientific and unsubstantiated claims. In this regard, I strongly urge people to stay away from the social media, particularly for finding any information pertaining to COVID. Instead, go to an official government site. There are several available in South Korea right now, and the best one I found, also quite user-friendly as well, is the one run by the Korea, Korea Disease Control 
and Prevention Agency, or KDCA. Okay, well, thank you so much for your insights this morning, and hope you have a great day, Professor. You too, sir. Thank you.